So I am here in Lexington, Kentucky, and uh, I am in front of the Mary Todd Lincoln House. This is the house that uh, Mary grew up in here in Lexington. And her father was a politician and a businessman, a slave owner, uh, and his name was Robert Todd. And so uh, this was the home where Mary uh, grew up uh, sitting at the table with her father and her father's political friends and his business friends. And you know, this would have been the early uh, 19th century. And so they didn't allow, uh, not allow, but they didn't encourage young women to get involved in political discussions. But Mary had a very keen political mind. Mary Todd was actually quite a genius, especially when it came to politics and sizing up people's character, uh, especially when she was younger. And so she would sit at the table with her father and with these other political leaders and financial leaders and business leaders here in Lexington. And she would listen and every once in a while, uh, she would break protocol and she would give her opinion on uh, whatever political matter was being discussed. And these gentlemen would look at her like, how does she know so much? Uh, but she knew so much because she was very smart on the one hand, but also because she would sit in on these discussions. She would listen to them and then she would uh, find out what they were reading and she would read it as well. And so in this very home behind me is where uh, Mary received her early political training. And that came in very handy uh, later when she moved to Springfield, Illinois, where her sister lived. And she was living with her sister, but she became kind of one of the sought after young ladies uh, there in Springfield. And so she was actually courted by two figures who would become political giants. And one was Stephen Douglas, and the other one was somebody who's right behind me here, Abraham Lincoln. And uh, she went back and forth uh, between these two men uh, who later on would represent the Democratic Party, Stephen Douglas, and who would represent the new Republican Party, Abraham Lincoln. And it was Lincoln and Douglas who had their debates uh, over slavery and the future of the country that became, you know, we know them as the Lincoln-Douglas debates, but that became the springboard. Those debates were actually transcribed and printed in journals and newspapers across the country, and that's what made Lincoln a national figure. And though he lost the election to Stephen Douglas, it actually set him up for the run for the presidency in 1860, and we all know that he won that election. And uh, Stephen Douglas, uh, even though he was a Democrat, he supported Lincoln and supported the Civil War. So he was a war Democrat, but sadly Douglas was in uh, ill health and he died very quickly, very early on in Lincoln's first uh, administration. I mean, he was not, he was a senator, but during Lincoln's first administration. But it was here in this place that Mary Todd learned the ways of politics, which she ended up being an extremely valuable advisor to her husband uh, throughout his uh, lawyer career, throughout his political career as a congressman, and then his run for uh, the United States Senate, which he lost to Douglas. Uh, but then in his presidency. Now, at the same time, uh, Mary Lincoln had some emotional and possibly mental health issues. We don't know. We can't know what exactly that was. Some people have speculated that perhaps she was bipolar. Uh, perhaps she had borderline personality disorder. It could have been some other kind of a health issue. We just simply don't know because it seems that her mental health declined as the years went by. Now, part of the contrib uh, contribution to that uh, would have been the fact that Mary lost her three of her four sons, and then, of course, her husband was assassinated uh, sitting next to her. And so imagine the trauma uh, of all of those losses. So the first son that she lost was 
her second born son, her first born son was Robert, who lived to be an old man. He was the only son who lived beyond childhood. But then the second son was Edward, and Edward died at a very young age, I believe, of uh, tuberculosis. And then uh, when, pre when Lincoln won the presidency, Willie and, T and Tad, uh, the youngest, whose real name was Thomas, uh, Abraham called him Tad because when he was little, he uh, squirmed around so much. Abraham said, well, he's, he's like a little tadpole, and that got shortened to Tad. So the youngest was Thomas or Tad. They moved into the White House with uh, Abraham and Mary, while their oldest, Robert, was attending Harvard University for most of the war until 1865, when he left Harvard and he went on the staff of General Lieutenant General Ulysses S. Grant uh, during the siege of um, Petersburg and Richmond, and then followed him to Appomattox. So. Robert Todd Lincoln was actually at uh, the surrender in at Appomattox, but the second son uh, died very young. Then uh, Willie, who was the third son, was very studious, was very learned. Uh, he liked to memorize things like train uh, schedules and, and timetables and all these type of things. Very smart. And most people said that Willie was the most like Abraham. And Abraham loved all of his sons, but he had a special affinity for Willie. But sadly, in the second year of the war, uh, there were all these soldiers that were living there and garrisoned there in Washington, D.C., doing training and, and being mustered in. And they would, uh, you know, camp along the Potomac River. Well, that became their bathing area. That became where their waste uh, went. Uh, but it also was drinking water for the city. And so a lot of people uh, became ill from this polluted drinking water, and many died. And sadly, one of the people who died was Willie Lincoln, who they believe uh, had uh, typhoid. And uh, he died in the White House. Well, that very much sent Mary into a deep, dark depression. And... Um, then, of course, when uh, Abraham was at assassinated right next to her, uh, that deepened. And then, sadly, she and Tad uh, went to Europe uh, to live. And she basically, she didn't even have Tad go to school. Uh, so Tad was, in, he was like 15, 16 years old in Europe without hardly any education at all. And Robert, who was by this point a lawyer, and then he got... Uh, he became a part of the Garfield administration as Secretary of War. He was very concerned about his brother not having an education. And so he helped arrange for Mary and Tad to come back to America. He helped arrange for Tad to uh, start his education. But sadly, Tad contracted uh, tuberculosis, they believe, again. And at age 17, Tad died. And that really was the thing that pushed Mary over the edge to the point where eventually she went back to Springfield and was such an embarrassment to Robert and was, you know, really causing great concern uh, that Robert actually had her committed to a mental asylum. And she contacted friends and congressmen and lawyers and was able to set up uh, an agreement with uh, Robert whereby she promised that she would go live with her sister in Springfield uh, if they would allow her out of the mental institution. And uh, Robert agreed to this. Mary moved in with her sister again in Springfield, went into an upstairs uh, bedroom, drew the curtains down, and lived basically in darkness and isolation for the rest of her life and died relatively young in her 60s. So Mary's is a sad story, but it's also an amazing story of someone who started right here in this house behind me and who accomplished an amazing amount. Uh, some people said that while Lincoln had uh, aspirations and um, was, you know, ambitious, uh, they said the real driving force behind his upward climb and his eventual winning of the presidency was the ambition, the support, and also the 
uh, advisory capacity of his wife, Mary Todd Lincoln. They had a difficult marriage, but they did love each other. And it's really interesting because the very final day of Lincoln's life, they went out for a carriage ride and they were talking to each other about how difficult the first term was. And they said, you know, we need now to spend more time repairing our relationship and having fun together. And uh, Mary said, well, where do you want to go, Abraham, after we get out of the White House? And he said, oh, I'd like to see the Holy City, uh, New Jer or Jerusalem. And she said, oh, that's awfully pious for a man who takes his wife on a buggy ride on Good Friday, which it was Good Friday. And, uh, and, and so they were having these discussions, making their plans for the, the, their wedded life after the White House. And sadly, that was never to be. Uh, that night, they went to the theater and uh, John Wilkes Booth uh, assassinated the president that night, which was uh, the beginning of Mary's descent. But it all began right here in Lexington, Kentucky at the Mary Todd Lincoln House.